it's Sarah and Brett. He's driving. We're not gonna distract him very much, but we are currently out on the road filming our first video of our Durham Region series. Um, we're, today we're gonna be talking about five things that we love in Durham Region. Um, sorry, five things that we love in Clarington, uh, which is in Durham Region. So if you're interested to know our first place, then keep watching. What's up guys? What? What? I'm talking My first. Turn. <laughs> We're at Pinkles Farm. This is one of our absolute go-tos. We just come here sometimes for lunch. We get the sausage rolls. They're delicious. Um, and then there's something that Pinkles has coming up that we haven't been able to experience yet, but maybe you want to check it out. It's Chef in the Bush. It's a little pricey, but I've heard it's actually totally worth it. Totally worth it. Uh, we can't go because that's when Jonathan naps. It's kind of in the middle of the day. I plan my day around baby naps. If you know, you know. Yeah. So. Um, so what is it? It's like a, I guess it's an outdoor experience. It's an outdoor yeah. eating experience and cooking experience where you actually take a walk from here to the back cabin. Apparently it's 20 minutes on foot. So you're going to work up an appetite yeah. and then they cook for you in the bush and it's just a whole experience. Yeah. Yeah, so check out Pingles um, online and I'm sure you can book the tickets there. They always have seasonal events here. They have like a holiday market for Christmas. They have an Easter thing. Yeah, going coming. on in this building over um, here. Like a pumpkin patch. They have so many cool things and they're really active on social media and on Instagram too. So check them out. They have a great cafe, um, which we'll show you in a second. And we're out from Pingles. So this is Markets, um, which is attached to the coffee shop that you just saw. I love coming here, just like grabbing a coffee, walking around and supporting local is something that we really try to do. And honestly, there's so many, just there's so many amazing things. People are so talented. Um, just homemade jewelry, candles, kids crafts, like there's just so much to look at. So I would highly suggest markets in downtown Bowmanville. Okay, what are you looking at? All among fruit. So just, it looks like some rubs for meat. For Keto too. Or smoking, if you like that sort of thing. We love to smoke on our, on our smoker. Smoke ribs and all sorts of stuff. Beef plate ribs, the best. Hey guys, we're in our next favorite place and it kind of encompasses a bunch of different places, but we are in downtown Bowmanville. Yep. So yeah, um, downtown Bowmanville, it's like a, it's an older, older downtown here. Um, but there's so many small businesses, local businesses, restaurants, coffee shops. It's really becoming a great hub for a lot of young people, a lot of families, lots to do. Um, so we're going to take you along to a few of our favorite little places that we go to and that we like to frequent. Yeah, what we wanted to kind of touch on here is a few of our favorite places. Um, not exactly all restaurants, but we're going to be talking about a place that's near and dear because one of our favorite individuals goes there quite often. Joey. Yeah, yes. Joey. Yeah, yeah. Not Jonathan, our son, but <laughs> Joey gets groomed. We don't get Jonathan groomed. So, the groomers. So the first place that we love is groom pet styling. Is it pet hair styling or what is it? Groom? Groom dog styling. We'll, we'll <laughs> post a link in the bottom, but yeah, it's um, basically a groomers. Yeah, um, and Megan who owns it is amazing. And uh, she makes our doggy look so cute all the time when he gets a little scruffy. What's your favorite restaurant in the downtown? My favorite restaurant is the Yardbird, which I think is another spot we're gonna we're gonna go to as well and show you. Um, we may not go in because if we go in, then we'll probably end up having to order something. And yep. I just ate a bunch of two hundred dollars later. Yeah, but you know what? Don't let the price tag scare you. It's really really good food. Um, great atmosphere, super chill. Um, and it's a uh, really high end, like Toronto style dining, but in Bowmanville, so. Yeah, they have uh, a good selection of bourbons if that's your style. Oh yeah, their cocktail menu is awesome. And then I always get the steak tartare because I'm a straight up savage and I like eating raw meat all the time. So, you know, so good. 
that's how it goes. With a quail egg on top. Gotta with a qu quail egg. Yeah, just a raw quail egg, raw meat. <laughs> Meatitarian. Yeah, I'm a carnivore diet guy, so, uh, you know, it's funny that like if you go to a vegetarian restaurant or if you go to like any meat restaurant, they'll, you know, accommodate a vegetarian. But I went to this vegetarian restaurant or vegan restaurant in the city. And for some reason, they didn't want to accommodate uh, carnivore there. So I think it's a little bit discriminatory and uh, <laughs> I didn't like it one bit. So we're now here at the Port Darlington Splash Pad and Park. It's not very warm out today and great weather obviously <laughs> we're tromping through the snow but in the summertime this place is pretty bumping and we used to come here and walk our dog at times yeah. before we had Jonathan and you know kind of thought about we always knew we wanted to have kids yeah. so it was kind of you thought about it's just like oh man what's it gonna be like to have a little guy or a little bring girl him to the like that. bring him to the splash summer, pad yeah this summer I wanted to do that that'd be fun this is the splash pad. Wait, wait a sec. I just wanted to say something more about Jonathan. Okay. Well, this year he was too small to go to the splash pad because I feel like if he was under one of the buckets, he just would have got squished. But this year he's going to be old enough that we can enjoy some summer days, go to the splash pad when it's super hot and enjoy our time down here by beautiful Lake Ontario. Indicates that you are not too far gone. So I thought we'd end it off at one of the more contemplative places mm -hmm. that we like coming to. So this is Camp 30. And this used to be a boys school, vocational school. And then during the war, World War II, mm -hmm. it used to be a POW camp for high ranking Nazi Germany. officials. Yeah. yeah, so it's crazy. A there's a history, lot of history, right? yeah. Like these building style, um, this is field style. So kind of in the style of Frank Lloyd Wright. So. If you're familiar with a place called Falling Water, it's in Pennsylvania. Look it up on YouTube. It's a really cool house, really famous. If you like arch architecture and stuff like that. But you remember when we first moved here in 2019? We did the walking tour. Yeah, so they do yeah. a walking tour through here. And I was always, I was asking Sarah, I'm like, what the hell is that thing on Lambs Road? Cause I didn't know anything about it. And we saw that some signs up that there was a walking tour. So we came down and I don't know if you're technically actually supposed to trespass here and go on here, but people do it all the Someone time. from the town will bring you through and there's a walk, there's a trail that kind of walks well, around. Well, no, but actually like, I don't think you're technically supposed to like technically be here. Well, but we're here because we wanted to show But we you. like to live dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so people come here all the time, walk their dogs, they go yeah. for a loop. There's a nice little loop that hooks up to the Soper Creek Trail, which is over that way, which goes from, you know, all the way from the top of Spruce Wood down to basically baseline, yeah. um, if you want to go that far, so. Yeah, we'll give you a little tour or just like a little um, pan of where we're standing. Um, at least it's, it's kind of sad. The kids come here and they just riddle it with graffiti and they've gone in the, these buildings. I, I heard like the kids are trying to like make YouTube videos and stuff inside and like Kinda film like, music videos. I'm not about to bust in one of these buildings. The middle-aged, <laughs> the middle-aged people are making YouTube videos. <laughs> so there's been like rumors that a developer took this over. Um, they did take, I think a portion of this property to build. Um, but I think they're trying to keep and, and preserve a lot of these buildings, but I don't know. No, I, don't know. I don't know how that's going to pan out. They're looking a little bit. If uh, you know us. more than us about this, comment below yeah. and tell us like what the heck's going on with Camp 30 or, you know, if you have any stories about Camp 30, maybe you are a Bowmanville original resident mm -hmm. and you know a little bit more than us because we're transplants from uh, Western Durham, yeah. Ajax yeah. to be exact. Yeah. But yeah, this is a great place to come and walk and it's a nice place to think. And I usually take a step back and I, I look at the buildings and I'm like, wow, like I wonder what it was like during the war period. And one of the funniest stories they told from the war period was that the Nazi um, officers took over 
one of the, took over the cafeteria building and then all the guards had to go in and um obviously they didn't have any weapons or anything like that no no guns or anything so i think they had a huge like they had hockey sticks they had, and like maple syrup or like i don't know <laughs> they were throwing something at each other but anyway they had a huge donnie brook and uh obviously we won just like we won the war so yeah um but yeah so this is it thanks so much guys for following along on five things that we love about Clarington and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to follow along the rest of our series. All right, peace. Bye.